In this video, we're going to learn how to use the mass mounted sight on the OH 58 Delta Kyle Warrior. Footage used in this video is pre-release software and is intended for promotion and training purposes. Its visual and audio qualities may not represent the final product. Alright everybody, welcome aboard the OH-58 Delta Kiowa Warrior from Polychop. We're sitting in the left seat. Today we're going to learn how to use the mass mounted sight, which is located above us. Can't really see it, uh, but it is up on top of the mast. And we'll talk about how to turn it on, how to operate it, and in a future video, transition to how to use it with Hellfires. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is actually turn it on, and we do that here on the switch. Now, we can't do that without having AC power. So if we look up at the overhead panel, we've got all of our generators on, which means we should have AC power. We can look over at our MPD and rotate that up to AC voltage. We do have what we need. So that allows us to turn on the site. So what we're going to do is just click, 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 click and bring it forward and we'll hit the MMS button here. And what's going to happen is it's going to unstow uh, the mass mounted site hangs out uh, facing rear of the aircraft. And once it's ready, we can bring it forward. Now let's talk about our key mapping and take a look at the co-pilot cyclic grip in the control options and get an idea of the things that we need to have. So in order to bring it forward, uh, just like we did when it was coming out of a uh, uh, stow is our MMS manual slash slave. This button you're going to use quite a bit. Uh, I use my uh, little mini stick, uh, the Z axis press. That's what I use to bring it out of uh, its various slave modes into manual mode. So that's what you're going to use to rotate it between uh, manual mode, move it around yourself and pre point mode, forward mode, things like that. Additionally, you're going to want your field of view uh, that's going to allow you to toggle through the various magnifications as well as some other uh, scrolling menu items that we can talk about in a future video. Area track is just what it sounds like. It's going to allow you to track an area. And our sensor select allows us to transition between TV and thermal imaging. Target designation locate function is going to allow us to use the laser to actually designate and save a target. And of course, our fire laser press and hold that's going to allow us to fire the laser some of these other functions are here but we're not going to really talk about them too much today uh, but those are the basics that we need to get the mms going all right so using that mms uh, manual slash slave we can see i've brought the system forward and it's telling us that it's forward and the tis is still hot because we just brought the aircraft or the mms online so that thermal imaging system has got to cool down before you can use it and i'm just going to rotate kind of show you uh, since we're looking at something very close, the trees are right there. Uh, it's very hazy, but uh, the TIS is cooling down, and once that message goes away, then it's ready to use. But by hitting that manual slave button, we can see that uh, the cursor looks a little bit different, and we can move it around when it's in manual mode. So what we can do is move the site off to the right, and once we hit that manual slave again, because we've got it in the forward, it's going to come back forward. We can see that center line there. Uh, that uh, closed carrot is showing us where the MMS is looking. Up here at the top right, we can see also from the center line, we can tell that it's now looking 13 degrees off to the right of the center line of the aircraft and five degrees to the left, as well as when we increase or decrease the uh, vertical azimuth, we can see that it's changing there as well. Now, why do you care about that? There is no way for us to visually see where the MMS is looking. That is to say, I don't have a helmet mounted sight. I can't tell where this is. And sometimes it can get very confusing. Uh, additionally, for the pilot on the right side, he may not have a good idea of where we're looking. So by having that information handy, it at least gives us an idea of where the MMS is looking. So if I push the MMS way off to the left, We'll just put it at about 70 degrees here off to the left. If I'm flying in the right seat, I've got that information. I know where the MMS is looking. I've got different ways to tell me. And so now I can uh, maneuver the aircraft to keep the site uh, where it needs to be and help the, the left seater out. All right, I'm going to get the aircraft picked up so we can look over these trees. But first, we'll just talk about some of these other buttons over here. So starting on the left side, this is the, the actual MMS control uh, panel. 
and we'll start here at the top laser codes so if we press that button it's bringing up the actual laser codes that we have uh in the system so if we want to change one of these we just select which one we want to change and we can hit uh clear and we can just type in what we want one six eight seven enter and there we have it if we want to go back out of that page we just hit laser codes again all right below that this is how we uh arm the laser uh, but we can bring it to standby we can do things with it but uh, we've got to bring it to arm in order to actually use it and again that laser switch is right here on our cyclic you can see that move and you want to have that mapped as well we'll keep it on standby for now and then first and last this is in real world the laser designator is going to pick up either the first or last uh burst of information that it sends out it's actually sending out multiple codes over and over uh so this has to do with uh kind of burning through obscurance or maybe there's some some bushes or something in the way and then uh but for purposes of dcs you can do whichever one you want here we've got our video uh focus and how to sort of change the way things look on the screen uh here on the left is how we actually change uh the way things look for the the overlay of the screen so if we've got a white background we want to make that dark and, and so on and so forth here on the right this is how we can change the level and the gain once we pick it up uh, we should probably see a little bit more of that change our focus this is how we set that to auto now within dcs none of these work this is not functional because of just sort of the nature of dcs and uh that that it's a computer game uh, that doesn't know what correct is so it's not gonna be able to auto focus there the operating switch is how we're gonna go into obviously forward pre-point search we'll talk about all that here in a short bit in the center we've got some switches most of these are irrelevant to us uh the uh the alfgl i don't even remember what that stands for uh it's not operational tis integrate is not operational lmc the linear motion compensator is going to take into account the range to a target so if we lay something it's going to know how far away that thing is and then it's going to help us uh control the slew rate of the site so lmc does work and the automatic leveling does not work so we don't need to worry about that above that if we want to go to the weapons page or the ASC page we just flip those up and down and if we want to go back to the initial page uh, where we started we can just hit down so we'll go back to the MMS and I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, aircraft up in the air so we can look over these trees and start doing some stuff all right so looking outside we can see that we're right on the edge of the tree line I can't really see uh, far out there but if I look in the site we're actually seeing uh, above the trees which is the whole point of the MMS and I'm going to switch over to TIS it should have cooled down by now and we can see that the TIS is not great all right the TIS uh, and this is accurate as it kind of looks into the sun or has other sort of uh, obscurance things will start to look a little bit weird uh, but really all it's good for is kind of finding hot spots like this so we found this hot spot out there and we'll, uh, we'll zoom in using that field of view and we can sort of zoom in there we can change over to white hot to black hot it's not really helping us just because of the situation that we're in so we're going to switch back over to tv and now we've got the target in sight so taking a look here on the left side we've got range uh this is essentially what's telling us what the laser is set to do so right now it's just set to ranging so, all right so i'm gonna go ahead and arm the laser and go ahead and give it a squirt and we can see that uh, we're getting information i'm just holding the button down uh, 4,799 meters to that truck but right now we're not designating anything we're just ranging that's all the laser is doing right now so if we want to use one of those codes that we have input we just got to press that button and we'll rotate through the codes and unlike the apache where hopefully you remember what the number is uh, this one actually tells you what the code number is so there's really no confusion so we'll go to laser code a 1687 all right so these buttons here have uh, more to do with uh, recording uh same over here we've got the vtr uh the video tape recorder which back in my day we actually had a eight millimeter cassette tape in the back of the aircraft we had to put a tape in there and that's how we would record uh eventually we had that change to a, a pimca card uh but a lot of this stuff is irrelevant the Vixel was basically you could take a picture and then transmit that off to another aircraft again just one of those features that we really didn't use too much i'm not even sure if they're going to integrate it with this module but right now it's not doing anything you can see that we're in manual mode and we're at the 4x uh, for magnification and that's about as good as it gets you can go in with the tis still barely see anything all right so we found our target let's say that we want to store this target uh, into our database so what i'm going to do is use that target 
store button, a target designate button. I'm gonna press that, we can see target locate. Now I'm gonna squirt my laser. I'm gonna hold it down for several seconds. About five seconds. All right, so now we've got it popped up. It says, do you wanna store this target? And you notice it starts at 99 Tango. It's, it's, it starts backwards. So the idea here is that if you're mission planning, your targets will start at, you know, target one, two, three, start going forward. But as you kind of store things on the fly, it doesn't want to overwrite stuff. So it starts at the at the end and works its way forward. So do we want to store this target as target 99 Tango? So we're going to hit store. Now we should have that in the database. So we're going to go to the HSD. We'll go to nav setup, target list. And we'll go previous page and there it is 99 tango it's an unknown at uh, this grid this elevation now we do have the ability to point track targets so we found a target right over here and we can just hit that point track switch and it's going to grab onto that now what we can do as well is offset and use a second point track so i'm going to use the offset acquire and all I'm doing is hitting the point track button again, and now we get this little crosshair. So as I'm moving my, my slew control, I've got this little crosshair. So I've got this other guy right over here to the right. So I'm going to put that crosshair right on him. I'm going to hit the point track button yet again, and it's going to drag everything over to that guy. And then if I hit it one more time, it's going to slew back to the original. So why would we use point track offset? You may not use it in DCS, you may not have really a, a reason to, but let's just say that this guy, we were worried about him having some sort of laser detection. So we can point track him, do that offset, so that while the missile's in flight, we can laze, and then in those last couple seconds, right before the missile hits, we can hit that point track button one more time, take us right back onto the target, and guide that missile in. If we hit that manual slave button, it takes us out of point track and into manual mode. Now we can move it as we like. All right, so let's talk about pre-point. A couple different ways we can use pre-point, but uh, we've stored a target. Remember that 99 Tango. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate to pre-point. And we can see up here we've got pre-point. The last target that we stored, it's going to be in the manual buffer. There's some ways that we can put targets in here to be uh, pre-designated as pre-point targets. Uh, but it's going to take the last target that we store and put it in there. So here we can see 99 Tango is our target so by using our manual slave we can bring our crosshairs over to that target so i'm going to hit the manual slave and you can see that it's bringing us right there so as i offset that little broken cross hatch that is the actual pre-point grid so why is this important of course if we have multiple places that we're trying to look at now we've got a list we can just sort of bounce between them uh, let's say that we're uh, searching an area for something we find something, we store it, we save that as a pre-point, and now we can move around, look in that area, but then quickly bring ourselves back to it so that we don't get disoriented, which is very easy to do when you're looking at a small screen like this. So different ways that we can use a pre-point function. And again, in our HSD, which we'll cover in a different video, but when we're creating a, a waypoint or a target and we uh, put in the information, if we hit this pre-point button, it'll store it into the buffer and it'll be one of those five options that we can use. And of course, if we want to come out of pre-point mode, we'll just switch it back to forward mode and we still have our manual track. All right, so this may not be as easy to see, but right now we're in manual mode. The, the site is kind of moving with the aircraft, the aircraft's moving forward. I'm going to go to area track and you can see that immediately it's picking up uh, a hold on that area. It's not sp specified on that vehicle, of course. We're not in a point track, but it's got an area track, so it's just looking at that general vicinity. And then now we can go back into manual and uh, move things around. All right, the last one we're going to talk about is area track acquire on the move. Now, this one can sometimes be a little bit funky, so we'll try and fight through it together. Uh, but I'm going to go to area track. We've picked up this area. I'm going to hit area track one more time, and I get this little crosshair. Now, sometimes you have to kind of fiddle around with it and keep hitting the button. But I've got that little cursor. I can move it over what I think is a target and now it's grabbed onto it now if i hit the point track button it transitions into a point track so let's do that one more time and uh try and fight through so i'm gonna go to manual mode i'm gonna go to area track i'm gonna go to acquire on the move there it is it's picked it up i'm gonna hit point track and now that becomes a point track on that target 
All right, I realized we did not talk about the search operation function for the MMS and good reason. Talking to the developers, they didn't have really the data needed to develop this. And to be quite frank with you, I never used it. I don't know anyone else who really used it. We'll talk a little bit about what actually does work. Uh, but according to the manual, there are some different options like a raster or a spiral. The only thing we've got available to us is point and sweep. So I'm just going to turn this on. Uh, we're at the offset, uh, so center. So this is center line, uh, nose of the aircraft, sweep 30 degrees. So it's going to go 15 degrees either side of that center line. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn on the sweep. And you can see that all it's going to do is go back and forth 15 degrees either side. We can change that angle to 40, so it's 20 either side. You can see that it's just moving left and right of our center line. The problem, of course, with this search is that it is zero degrees. Um, so anyway, this is probably not something you're going to use because you can just do this manually. You're really not gaining anything from it doing it uh, for you. So I would basically just say ignore the search function and keep it in the forward and pre-point. As you've heard me say many times before, practice. Just get in here, start mashing buttons, have a general idea of what you think it's supposed to do, and just start trying to get it to match up. Again, things like area track and point track, they're not going to be 100%, and that's realistic. All right, They didn't always pick up something. Uh, they don't always know what you're trying to point track. They may not have enough contrast or enough detail for it to figure out that it's trying to point track a certain thing or area track a certain thing. So just keep playing around with it. It's not meant to be a uh, easy button for you. It's just meant to offload a little bit of your workload. All right, guys, well, hopefully that was helpful for you. Learned a little bit about the MMS and what you can do with it. Again, a big thanks to all my Patreon supporters, YouTube members. Thanks for all the support you give to the channel. And thanks a lot to all of you who watch these videos, who support the channel through subscribing and liking and sharing. It really does matter. It really does help the channel grow. Look forward to you guys getting an opportunity to get your hands on this aircraft. Get out there, put some warheads on foreheads. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you later. Take it easy.